Hi friends, welcome back to Connerty Meadows Farm. Today, you can see we have a load of wood here. Today the plan is to finish the third chicken coop. It's gonna be identical to this chicken coop here, although we did purchase some windows this time, so the windows are gonna be a bit different, but the rest of the coop is gonna be identical, and hopefully we can show you the whole process. I want to talk about the floor first because I actually don't have a video of us building the floor. Uh, if I can find some pictures, I'll insert them here. Uh, I just want to show you what we've actually done with the floor. So we have treated wood on the bottom and then right on top of the treated wood here, we have hardware cloth. I don't know if you can see it. So this is half inch and then we have plywood and then on top of the plywood is where we have the um, vinyl flooring. Uh, it's, it's what's cheaper nowadays. We used to just get linoleum, but you can see here, there's a little bit right there. So the reason why we layer it like this is because with chickens comes rodents. And so the wire at the bottom prevents the rodents from being able to chew up through the plywood. It's three quarter inch plywood and then getting in through the vinyl. So that is the steps for the floor. And now we will frame up. So the idea is we're going to build a coop pretty much identical to this one. While we were waiting for the opportunity to finish this coop, we had just put some tarps down. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take those tarps off. The first thing we got to do is cut all the wood. Right now, Thomas is measuring and cutting the woods for the walls of the coop. Now that we have all the pieces cut, it's assembly time. Thomas is just using the nail gun. We're laying out pieces and we are getting ready to get a wall up. Just finishing up the last of the nailing here. And then AC and I are gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift this wall. All right, let's make this thing start to look like a building. Wall one in the air. Simple matter of nailing into place. We are moving on to wall two here now. This wall is shorter. It is the uh, front wall that's gonna have the windows. So you'll notice that we're not actually gonna put as many boards in because we have to account for the windows. Now we're just nailing what we have into place. And then we will get ready to lift this wall. Thomas just has to do a little math here. He's measuring out where the windows are gonna go. Need to do a little bit extra. And then he had the girls check his math. So here's his math on figuring out how much space he has to leave. He's the math guy. We're just making sure the last bits of the windows, the headers and the footers are the right measurements. Make some outside of the wall and then it's very easily to put them in. Here we go windows in header footer he put the wrong one in the wrong side but that's all right we got it sorted out and there you go you can see that's what our windows are going to look like so they are a little bit smaller than the windows on the other coop but it's all right they're still going to be great or at the bottoms of the windows you always want to put support on your headers and footers. So that's all he's doing here. And Casey's helping out, making sure that we get them in the right spots, measure it out. And then we'll be ready to pop this wall up in just a moment. And there we go. Look at that, just like that. We have two walls on. 
I was checking the floor because sometimes when he um, uses the gun, sometimes the nails can go the wrong way and end up puncturing my vinyl floor, but he was lucky there was no puncturing. And there we go. We now have a standing wall. Doing a few more cuts here, getting ready for the next bit. Now this next bit, so the tricky bit, it's figuring out the angle from the top wall to the bottom wall. And once we have that figured out, obviously we're going to construct those back walls. And they do look a little wonky because one side of the wall is higher than the other wall. And it is a little bit challenging, but we get it done. I missed the bit of lifting this back wall up, but you can see that it's there. We're just discussing which part we're gonna do next and where we're putting things. And now he's just gonna hammer it into place. We've got it lifted, but just sorting it out. <laughs> Talks and the kids and everybody was in that one. There we go. So you can see three sides done. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to construct the wall closest to the camera here. And this is the wall that is actually going to have a door and a window. So it is a little bit more complicated than the rest of the walls. It's kind of similar complication to the wall with the windows. So it does take a little bit of extra work. All right, we're ready to lift this wall. You can see the open gaps area there. So one of those will be the door and one will be the window. Just putting it into place. It was a tight one. Yeah, make it nice and snug. So to hammer it into place sometimes. There we go. You can see the exterior of what the new chicken coop is going to look like. Here we're going to measure out where we're putting our headers and footers for the windows. And you'll be able to see it's a very long skinny window. I got uh, two of them the exact same size uh, at a garage sale and uh, I used one in the one coop and this one will be, we've been saving it for this coop so they'll be identical. We're just going to finish up the headers there for the door. As you can see, we've gone as tall as we can with the door, uh, given the angle. And it is tall enough for the girls and I to get in and out of okay. But Thomas would uh, clunk his head on it, so he has to be careful coming in and out. And there's what she looks like. So now we're on to the next day. We had a neighbor come over and help us out which was excellent. It made things go a lot faster, especially when you're having to handle plywood. So it was really great. Someone a little bit stronger and uh, two people going at the drill to get all the plywood in made the day go a lot faster. We definitely got a lot more done than we normally would have. have a couple vents that go into the chicken coop, uh, one in the front and one in the back, uh, exactly right across from each other for airflow. So right now you can see that we're just working on putting in 
where the vents are going to go. And these are just the vents that you would put on a dryer um, on the outside of your house so that air can go in and out, but critters can't go in and out. It's just to give a little extra airflow. And here's the boys working. We're just ripping some plywood to get it in all on the right sections. Here we're just going to hold the plywood up and Thomas is actually drawing inside to show where we're going to put the chicken door and then we're here we're just going ahead and we're cutting out where that chicken door is going to be and the chicken door is what we just open up for the chickens especially if the weather isn't as warm I don't have to open a whole big man door it's just this little door and there you can see there we have a perfectly little squared door that the chickens will be able to go in and out and that door will actually be underneath the overhang so even when the weather isn't the greatest they'll be able to get outside we kind of cheated a little bit here and we just held up the plywood and thomas drew on it and we just cut it that way instead of sitting there and trying to figure out all the measurements it just seemed to be a little bit faster at the end of the day as we always say we're building a chicken coop not a piano so it doesn't have to be perfect and um, it doesn't have to be exactly the way you would do it elsewhere. A lot of what we're doing here you're going to see we use kind of like every piece of plywood that we can. We scrap piece it together. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle and we just kind of figure out well if I've got a little bit of this piece and a little bit of that piece where can I put it using as much of the plywood as we possibly can because we obviously with the price of materials um, we don't want to waste again we're going to kind of take the cheaters way out here and Thomas goes inside and literally draws out where the door and the window goes and then he will cut those cutouts from that plywood so uh, we're using exactly what we should be. Now that angle is the angle from the other side so that we know that it is the right angle for the top to the bottom and uh, we just slap it all together every little piece that we can making every piece count. Here the boys are just measuring out where the opening for the vents are going to go. So we're going to cut that little square out. And you can see we're just, again, we're freehanding a lot of this because it's just a chicken coop. We're measuring out where the uh, hurricane clips are going to go. Uh, this is what, what we use to put the roof on. Not that we have hurricanes here, but it does make things just a little bit easier. And we don't have to worry about getting the angles of things properly done. We can just uh, use the hurricane clips to put everything in place. And it was nice to have two tall guys do this. Normally I'm the one balancing on a ladder and Thomas is like balancing on another ladder. So it was really nice to have a neighbor who was also tall come and help. Here we are putting the strapping up on the joist so that we can get ready to put the tin up. And once you're at this part, it does seem to go pretty quick. It's unfortunate. There's a lot of ladder work that's involved in this, which is uh, really hard on Thomas's joints with all the surgeries he's had. But there we go. We can move on to the tin now. We do leave a rather large overhang on the side that the windows are on with the tin. And that's just to stop um, the rain from when it comes off the building going straight down into the window, which then goes into the coop. Of course, the whole point is to keep the rain out of the coop. 
These are uh, special screws with grommets on them, rubber grommets, to prevent the water from going down into the building after you uh, screw them in. So I'm just bringing the tin roof over and and Thomas, uh, he does all the, of the roof screwing in. to another day now. Uh, this would have been the third day that we were working on building the coop and now we're working on the overhangs. So we're just measuring things out and getting our angles correct. We've already got a board going across the two posts outside. And once we have the angles correct we just go ahead and we attach them and you can see the makings of what the overhang will look like now and that will give them a place to get out of the wind, the rain, and the snow uh, all winter long. Not that they're that bothered by it, but it's nice just to give them the option. He's just cutting all of the wood on the angle here for this roof. Look at those beautiful colors in the background. The nice maples were showing off. This uh, was Thanksgiving weekend while we were building this coop, so we really had some gorgeous weather and some beautiful colors. And then we're just adding the strapping on, just like we did with the other roof. You put strapping on, and then you can go ahead and put the tin on. And for those of you that don't know, Canadian Thanksgiving is held on the second Monday in October, unlike other places in the world. As we had just been working with the strapping, Thomas wanted to go ahead and do up the trim for the windows and the doors. We just use strapping for that as well. So we just went ahead and you can see, dress it up a little bit. Here I am just measuring out and cutting some hardware cloth to put over the vent just in case something manages to chew through the plastic then they would be faced with having to chew through wire to get into the animals. It's just a little extra security thing. We've never had it happen, but I always rather look at things as let's be safe and set a story. And there you can see it. Now I'm going ahead and I am stapling up the hardware cloth on the windows as well. And again, the same reasoning. We don't leave the windows closed, we want it open but we need the an animals inside to be secure from the predators outside. So I just go ahead and we put hardware cloth on all the windows. Thomas is building the chicken door here, which is the one that we talked about that they are able to go outside and you can see the overhang uh, on the top there. I'm going ahead and I'm finishing up the wire on the windows and uh, he's getting the screws and the hinges onto the little chicken door. And a quick peek inside here. So you can see the hardware cloth on the windows, nice and tight. And the back wall there will be brooders. We're not there yet. We'll get there. And then the hardware cloth on the vent and the hardware cloth on that window and the door. And there is hardware cloth on the other vent. And that's what she looks like. And let's get back to cutting for the next things that we're building. I don't know if you can see it on the ground there, but right in the front in the middle of your screen, that is the door. And so we're just going ahead and again, we're just using strapping kind of to give the door a little more um, solidness and it just trim it up, make it look nice. It also gives us somewhere to sink in the screws for the hinges and the latches, it makes the door a little bit stronger than just plywood itself. All right, you can see what it's gonna look like. And then we just get that door hung.
quick tour of the almost complete new chicken coop. Some windows in the front there, tin is on. I'll take you in there in a second. This is the overhang, little door there. Uh, we still have to do the tin on there. We're gonna sort that in just a minute. And then we've not completed anything inside except the screening on the window. We still have to put the brooders in the back and the nest boxes up, but there she is. Home sweet home. Last year I'd found an ad on Marketplace for a whole bunch of tin for like 40 bucks and it was just up the road from us so I went and I got it and so we are really using scrap pieces of tin. They are recycled pieces. Um, we have built the overhang on the identical chicken coop. We did the roof and the overhang on the a duck coop. We also built a rabbit coop and now we are using the same tin for the overhang on this coop. So my $40 went a really long way. When you live on a farm you're always finding ways to save money and I strongly suggest have a look on Marketplace, on Kijiji, anywhere that uh, you think that you can get a deal with four things that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just needs to get the job done. It's a lot of tin for very little cost. When I got all that tin, there was some roof cap, but we used it on the other coop and I had none left for this one. So what I did was I took some of the tin and I just folded it in half along one of the ridges and that's what we used for our capping and it worked just fine. Again, just use what you have, doesn't need to be perfect or fancy. Another day, another work job. So right now what we are building are the brooder boxes. And these are what go in the back. And these are where moms and babies will go to have time to acclimate to each other and for the rest of the coop to get used to them being in there. I loved, in my old farm, we had a place that I called the nursery. The one thing that I didn't like about having the nursery in a different building was that when it was time to reintroduce mom and babies to the flock, they tended to get picked on. Whereas these brooder box built right into the coop means that the mothers actually never leave the coop and then they never have to fight for their seniority or their place again. Um, they're already always there and everyone can see the chicks and get used to them. And then when the time comes, I just open the door and they go out and they run around the coop and it works perfectly. And the top one, uh, we use it as a shelf where the roof is angled. We store things up there like waterers, feeders, um, grain even. Thomas is just doing some measurements here that we're gonna need to fill in some gaps to keep rodents out. I was using wood that I had found and uh, outside and one of them had a plant on it, which was kind of funny. That's why you saw that little bit of green. Plants just want to grow. So what you can see is Thomas is actually putting a two by four in the gaps so that if a rodent for whatever reason managed to get into the coop and get down, it would not be able to get all the way down. And here we're just cutting out the plywood that's going to go on the bottom part. Remember what I said about plants wanting to grow? <laughs> that was just uh, a piece of 2 by 4 we had on the ground outside. So I just thought it was really funny and I left it as long as I could. So you can see we slid the plywood in. That is going to be the floor of the raised brooder box. And what we had to do around the outside of the edges, which Thomas is doing right now, is he's putting a two by four in the corners so that nothing can get down or up into each of them. So it is a very, very tedious job because he's gotta go all the way around in each of the gaps in the floor and then as well on the upper part to do the same thing. I am just rolling out the flooring here. This is the same vinyl flooring that was on the ground. And what I have to do is I have to cut out 
each of the pieces of two by four so I can slide it all the way to the wall. The reason why we use linoleum or vinyl is because it does make it much easier to clean. It's it does make it slipperier for them, but if you put enough shavings down, that helps with that. But in cleanup, it makes a huge difference. And again, you can see this is pretty tedious. I take a lot of time doing this because I really can only do this once because we build on top of this. Just staple it into place. And uh, we are ready to move on to building on top of it. But I have found in the past this just has made a huge difference in cleaning and uh, I really like to use it. So as you can see, Thomas is measuring out the next piece. So what he's doing is he's measuring out the divisionary between the two bottoms. So there'll actually be four pens. So where the floor that I am just working on now will be two pens and then on the bottom there'll also be two pens. And you can see that Thomas is working on those now and I am putting nails in. I know I stapled the vinyl in, but I do also put nails in just to make it, um, make sure that it doesn't move and make it stronger. And there you can see now, you can see how there'll be four pens in that area. The next step here is while Thomas is getting the front parts ready, I am rolling out the hardware cloth for the top. So the top is just hardware cloth and that is again to keep rodents, if they get in for whatever reason, out. Now here you can see a better idea of what the four pens are going to look like. We did finish really late at night. I was not able to show you how we did all of that start to finish just due to the fact that I literally, we were doing it in the dark with headlights. We are on to the next day now and we'll be able to show you how we put the doors in, but you get the gist of it. We just built squares, we put them on, we covered them in hardware cloth and those were one side of each of the brooder pens. And then we're building doors to go on the front of each of the brooder pens. There is also hardware cloth in the divisionary uh, between the middle of them. And that's just to stop the chickens from getting into each other's pen and giving me four full pens. Here we go. We are gonna hang up some of the doors now so you can see how this works. Again, we didn't spend a lot of money on handles or hinges. I actually went to our local ReStore and I got hinges, handles, and the slider locks from the ReStore. I think I paid probably 50 cents a hinge and uh, maybe a dollar for the slider locks. Just always that we try to save money. I use the ReStore a lot for repurposing um, on the farm stuff. As you can see, some of the handles are gold and the hinges are silver and the sliders are gold, but it, it doesn't matter. We don't care. It's just chick coop and it does the job. Now, normally for chicken coops, I do not suggest a slider, but in this case, because it is in the inside, we went ahead and did it. We are outside again, and as you can see, there is a gap. So right now what we're doing is we are taking plywood and we are covering the gaps around the whole outside of the coop. So obviously rodents can get in. So this is our way of covering all the gaps. All right, quick close up of what it looks like all around the outside. Now we're just gonna build some nest boxes. Um, our old coop actually had metal nest boxes that are purpose built. We did not have that option here. So we built them, I'm using milk crates. Uh, you can just go ahead and see how we're making this work. Uh, we ended up finishing doing all of this in the dark. I could not film this whole process, so I apologize for that, but I will take you through and show you. Good morning, everyone. We finished the chicken coop last night. 
and um, you've had a visual of it all the way through in time lapse. Unfortunately, we finished in the dark last night with headlights because we wanted to give the tickets their occupancy permit. So they spent the night in there last night. Now, it's not 100% done. There's still a few little things to do, but for the most part, it is done. And I'll walk you through the last steps that I could not show you on time lapse uh, simply because we were doing it in the dark. So come on down, let's go, let's see. I, um, I actually thought that my shirt was uh, rather fitting today. Let me see if I can show it to you. I'm a Chickaholic on the road to recovery. Just kidding. I'm on the road to buy more chicken coops, except in our case, um, build more chicken coops. My uh, Cosmos are blooming and they're beautiful and the bees keep being covered in them and then my old sunflowers the uh, birds love it all right let's go in all right and there she is the new coop so just like the other coops it has a beautiful overhang eventually the thought process is this overhang will be filled in so even in the winter time they will have a space that they can get outside away from the snow and it'll double their uh, floor space, so to speak. Um, all of our coops have that. So this coop and the one that I just showed you, the new one, are virtually identical. The only thing different is the window size and the nest boxes. All right, so let's take you inside and I'll show you what I didn't get to show you last night. So we made the roost here and we just went to the woods and grabbed um, some cedar and then it's attached up here and this is actually hinged. So the reason why we put this roost on a hinge is so we can pick it up and then it'll get tied to the ring that's there, which means that that makes this whole area here easier to clean out. So that's why it's on a hinge. And the bottoms are on a slant so that they don't dig into the ground. And these are also cut on a slant here. And then um, I have to still hang the um, grain bin here. And there was a chicken in the nest box. So these are the nest nice. boxes here. Uh, we have one more here, but it's still currently in the old coop because there's a chicken setting and oftentimes if you move them, they uh, don't like to stay where they're at. So we have uh, a row of nest boxes down here and then a row here and it looks like the shavings all fell out of them. So I'll have to deal with that. And then back here are what we call the brooder boxes. So if we have mums with babies, or an injured chicken or anything like that they'll go in these boxes and we actually do have some occupants in here um, she is uh, I don't know if I can get you to see there we go I think she has four ducklings five, five ducklings she's just keeping a couple of them warm under her oh there's one so so the purpose of this is to still give the mums and the babies time together and then we just open these doors and they can come out and hang out with the flock but it just gives the babes time to adjust to being with mum and that's what all of these ones are for. So that's what I miss putting up on camera. Um, up here this is all wired in and we usually use that part as a shelf. The reason why we put the grain bags there is otherwise the chickens treat this as a roosting area. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I missed showing you last night was putting the nest boxes up these ones here We made them in such a way that we can take them out and uh, Clean them and that was not an egg that fell. That was uh, just a golf ball <laughs> No egg just a golf ball. We've got to add a few more to the nest there, but uh, so yeah, oh look there they're out There is our finished coop and we've walked you through the whole process. The only thing we have left to do at this point is we do need to put some trim around the doors just to stop the gap, but that's a, a small little thing. And then we have to install the windows. We already have them. The, the sections are built 
to size. Once we have the windows, we will trim them out as well so there's no gap and then they'll swing open and close. Actually, I'll just pop you over to the other coop and I will show you the windows there, but we've still got a little bit of time before we need to put the windows up. This is the other finished coop and this is the window here. So we just bought older uh, windows and then we just install uh, hinges on them and latches so that latch is closed in the winter that's just to tighten it off it was a little bit warped and then in the warmer summer months we just uh, have a hook and we latch it on and we leave it open so we'll still have like this this trim out in here and that's exactly what we've got to do on the door here trim that out so the windows will be trimmed out and then the same thing in the front here again with just the trim out the windows will be added with hinges and latches and um, they're prefabricated windows from an old farm so we're just repurposing and then that's it then that coop will be done but we're not in a push to do the windows now so there you have it i hope this video has been helpful for you if it has don't forget to give us a like subscribe to our channel um, and this is uh, winterized uh, here in Canada. I know lots of people will tell you, oh, it's really, really cold there. Yes, it's really cold here. Yes, we get snow. Yes, we get minus 40. Chickens do not need heat. What they need is draft free and uh, well ventilated. And this coop does cover both of those aspects. It is ventilated through a lot of the top soffiting. It is ventilated through the vents we've put in and the windows and the doors are not fully sealed, so there is some ventilation in through there. It is draft free and there's lots of space. Those are the most important things for a chicken coop. They don't need heat, um, unless you're raising specialty breeds and some of those ones would need heat, but for regular laying hens like we have here, they don't need heat, they just need draft free and ventilated. So yeah, this is our lovely coop in Canada. Thanks for hanging out with us on the farm. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Let's see. The there she goes. She's in the coop. <laughs> She's like, this is my new coop. I'm going to go lay in here. It's nice or in here. <laughs> She's like, oh, hello. She's been in and out all day when I'm moving the duck. She must like them. Watch, she'll fly to the very top ones. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's where she kept going. Well, let's see what she does. Come on, chicken. Up you go. Dun, dun, dun. She's thinking about it. Oh, she's talking about it. There we go. Oh! <laughs> Hopefully we'll get a lay egg out of that.